Hi everyone, welcome to my video on muscle contraction. So here we have our actin. Okay, this is inside of our muscle, the smallest little sections of our muscle. They're called myofilaments. Okay, and the other myofilament is called myosin. And this part of the myosin is the head of the myosin, which is eventually going to connect to the actin, and we're going to have that muscle contraction happen like that. So these two structures, there's also a few other things connected to the actin. So the first thing that we have is called tropomyosin. And we also have these little connections on the tropomyosin. They're like little keyholes that have a certain type of structure. So for this one, the structure has to be a little square end or like a diamond in order to fit. Okay, Like a certain key um, can only fit a certain lock. So anything that's circular or anything that's not going to be this angle is not going to fit in that little molecule. We call that troponin. So troponin actually needs this molecule, calcium, to bond with it. So it is the perfect little shape that calcium is floating around all over your body. You get it from your food. Okay, There's lots of different sources of calcium in your diet that you could have. And calcium can fit with the troponin. And once it fits with the troponin, um, what happens is it basically removes the tropomyosin so the myosin head can attach to the actin. Okay, so when this happens, okay, my calcium goes on to my troponin. It's going to basically pull off that whole um, strip of tape. And what it leaves behind is kind of a sticky residue. So I don't know if you've ever had a tape, piece of tape on something for a long time. And when you peel it off, there kind of the stickiness stays on. Um, that's what's going to have the myosin head attached to it. Eventually, the sticky residue, and I have it in quotations because it's not actually sticky residue. Okay, It's going to be a bonding site, um, molecular structures that allow the myosin head to actually bond to it. But I'm using a metaphor as sticky residue, like you peel off tape, it leaves that sticky residue, and the myosin head gets stuck to that sticky residue. Okay, right here. So after the myosin head attaches, what happens is it kind of flexes. So imagine this here is like your hand grabbing a rope, and then your arm is going to bend and pull the rope in one direction. Okay, so the myosin head is attaching to the actin, it's flexing the myosin, and it's causing the actin to be pulled in one direction. Okay, so after that happens, just like if you're pulling a rope, you want to pull and pull and pull and pull with your hands, okay, you would have to remove your hands and grab the rope um, further along so you can pull it again towards your body, and then you pull it again and pull it again. So eventually, you do want to remove the myosin head so you can attach maybe down here or down here or even farther down like that so you can keep pulling the actin in this direction but in order to remove it now it's really really stuck to that sticky residue and it needs energy okay in the form of ATP in order to do that so ATP is used here okay, remember ATP is adenosine triphosphate so it's going to pull off one of the phosphates okay which leaves us a with ADP and an inorganic phosphate, and it releases the energy stored in that bond to help myosin be removed from the sticky residue. Okay, so once that happens, the myosin head can be pulled off. And now it's going to go back to normal, no longer flexed, and basically it's free to attach now further along on the actin. Okay, so this piece of tropomyosin would go back to normal. Okay, another piece of um, section of calcium would have to attach to another troponin and remove that piece of tropomyosin so that the myosin head can attach. And it would keep doing this over and over and over again until eventually the muscle has fully contracted. So this is another diagram of what we're seeing in the previous diagram. So we have our actin, we have our myosin. Okay, the myosin head attaches to the actin. It flexes, causing it to pull in one direction. Okay, this direction, or sorry, this diagram is just going in the opposite direction. Okay, eventually, once we have flexed completely, 
Okay, we're going to have to use a little bit of energy to remove the myosin head, and then it's going to do that a little bit farther along. Okay, when I'm looking at the big picture of this, this is what this actually looks like. So you don't just have one myosin head, you actually have multiple. So all of the myosin heads are going to be attaching to the actin. They're all going to be flexing at the same time and then removing using ATP and pushing in further. So now we're a little bit further in, the actin is a little bit further closer together. And we're doing this over and over and over again until basically okay, the myosin heads are going to be have no more room left. Okay? The actin will be completely together, and that's when our muscle is fully contracted. Okay, so this idea of your muscle contracting, meaning it gets smaller, is because every single myofilament that makes up every single muscle fiber, which makes up every single muscle, is doing this process all together, causing the muscle to get shorter in length. Okay, so you do have to draw out these diagrams. There's a space in your notes to do that. Okay, so make sure you have all of that diagram drawn out. Um, there is going to be a quiz on that diagram tomorrow, and you are going to have to write out the steps as well as draw the diagram. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know. If not, have a wonderful evening.